Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? It's your man Eric Wilson for the Sports Arena. And as you can see, look, I got the shirt. Hold on, I even flip it around for you. You already know what time it is. National Scouting Combine, man. January 23rd through the 27th, Grand Park Events Center in Indiana. 12th year, and it keeps getting better and better and better. Uh, you know, whenever I get the opportunity to speak to the crew, it's just it's such a warm feeling because, you know, five years ago, when I first discovered the National Scouting Combine, I was didn't know what I was walking into. And what I'm saying, six years, five, six years later, man, it's family all the way around. So much so that, you know, this next guy, he has been such an inspiration. Every year I see him, it's just so great because you want to talk about a guy who is so in love with the game of football. And is so in love with the success of the athletes who come to the National Scouting Combine. He makes you feel like he's your uncle. Now, we share the same last name, so I have the privilege of calling him. This is my uncle. Uncle Jay is in the building. What's going on? Hey, how you doing, Eric? I'm Good well. to see I'm you. Well. Great to see you, Uncle Jay. So listen, Director of Player Personnel, Jay Wilson for the National Scouting Combine. Hey, man, I know your time is precious, so let's get right to it. Talk to me about this year's event and what has you excited for the 2023 annual National Scouting Combine? Oh, I think the biggest thing about it is the fact that we're going to have uh, an opportunity to put these young men into a game situation and play a game so that they can show what they can do on the field, not just what they can run, not what they can jump, but what they can actually do on a field. Because you know as well as I do uh, – Sometimes those numbers don't equate to what type of a ball player they actually are. Yeah. And I mean, it's really I'm, I'm really excited. The fact that, you know, you and Jimmy and Chad and Scott have decided to bring the game back because I think that that's a missing component and how it's going to be structured, I think, is really cool. But let's get to the heart of it. You know, you scout these young men throughout the entire year speak to them on an individual basis, you know, you get to really do a deeper dive into these athletes. Talk to me about some of the traits that when you are talking to a young man about coming to the National Scouting Combine and showing who they are, showcasing their talent, what are some of the intangibles that you yourself look for? Well, I, you know, every position is a little bit different. But bottom line is, for all of these athletes, it doesn't matter if they're a quarterback, a defensive back, a running back, they have to have good footwork. They have to have good hips. If they're tight in the hips and their footwork is not good, doesn't matter what else they do because they're not going to be able to play at a high level. Uh, you know, on a quarterback, I look to see how quickly they release the ball. Uh, are they waiting for a receiver to get wide open before they decide to throw the ball? Uh, last year, we had Guy Myers in out of the University of Charleston. One of the biggest drawbacks on Guy was he wanted to wait until those guys got completely open. Uh, so one of the things he was working on with his quarterback coach was reading that defense a little bit quicker. Because we all know, uh, you know, all these guys can throw the ball. There, there's nobody out there that's playing college football quarterback that can't throw the ball. There's nobody in the NFL that can't throw the ball. The difference between Tom Brady and everybody else is he processes that information about a tenth of a second faster than everybody else does. He knows where guys are going to be, when they're going to be open. And a lot of times when you see him throw a ball, there's nobody in the area. And, and you're, you think to yourself, what is, where, who's he throwing it to? Next thing you know, here comes a wide receiver out of nowhere, right where the ball is. So that's what I look at for a quarterback. You know, the offensive lineman, defensive lineman, like I said, if you have good footwork, good size, you're going to go places in this game. Yeah, and, and that's, the, that's one of those, like I said, those intangibles that as a man in your position, someone who's been doing this for, you know, at 12 years with the National Scouting Combine and prior to that, you know and understand what these teams, what these specific coaches are looking for, which is why people value your opinion on the athletes that do come to the National Scouting Combine. 
But Uncle Jay, talk to me just about this year and just, you know, the importance. You know, I, I spoke to Jimmy and he talks about why it was moved up from traditionally when the NFL combine was going on to January, uh, bringing back the game, introducing some of our new technology partners that are coming on. What are you most excited about for this year at the National Scouting Combine? Well, I, you know, the, the process of us deciding to move it up uh, had to, a little bit to do with if we were going to put the game into place and have these guys come in and play, we wanted them as close to the end of their season as possible so that they were still in game shape. Uh, you know, a lot of these guys will, will transition out of game shape and start going into testing mode. Uh, and we want to get them before they actually start going into testing mode. Uh, the, the big thing, the dates we picked is because it doesn't conflict with any other bowl games, any other all-star games. There, there's nothing else out there going on. So, you know, we were fortunate enough to, to have a conversation with the NFL to have them send their teams in to scout these players. And it, it was a big move for us. Uh, you know, there were a lot of a lot of hoops to jump through to get to that point. But we, we jumped through them. We got to where they were comfortable with what we were doing. And so that's, you know, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to some uh, NFL personnel, some CFL personnel coming in and seeing that type of athletes that we actually have come in year after year. Uh, it's I've, I've always said it, you know, our event is something – that these guys that aren't playing every Saturday on national TV, this is their opportunity to shine. This is their opportunity to get in front of people that can make that decision. Uh, uh, you, you said earlier about people trusting me. Right before we came on the air, uh, I got a text message from an indoor coach. Hey, wh what other players do you have? I said, how many do you need? I have a, I have a database of about – a thousand over the last few years. So, you know, I, I continually get calls and get messages from coaches looking for players. Uh, you know, we were fortunate enough. Uh, Shane Carpenter that, that came into our event was just drafted as the number five offensive lineman in the XFL draft. Uh, big kid, six, five, three or four. He's going to do well in the XFL. Uh, I'm surprised that, a team hasn't brought him in in the NFL. Actually, uh, he's a good he's a good football player. Yeah, and um, you know, kind of piggybacking off that, I'll just say shameless plug, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned because I actually have that interview with Shane Carpenter coming up very soon, talking about not only his time at the National Scouting Combine, but how the National Scouting Combine helped prepare him for being and having his shot to play at the next level. Uncle Jay, much love to you, my man. Thank you so much for doing this for me. I'm excited to see you and, and the entire family and everybody at the National Scouting Combine Indianapolis, January 23rd. I'll talk to you real soon. All right, Eric. Take care, bud. Stay healthy, and we'll see you in, a, in a, about two months. Yes, sir.